Many people who would not go out any morning without a few moments of prayer will go forth day after day into the thick of life's duties and perils without reading even a verse of Scripture. They feel the necessity of asking God to keep, guide, and bless them, but they fail to realize that it is in and through meditating on His Word that God chiefly gives His richest and best blessings. It is in His Word that God reveals Himself. We cannot know what He is like, nor what the attributes of His character are, unless we ponder the Scriptures. We cannot learn what God's will is, nor what He would have us do and to be, if we do not look into His Word. There is nothing that we need more than to hear God speaking to us every morning. This is possible only as we open the Bible and let its words whisper their messages to us. No matter how familiar we may be with the teachings of the Scriptures, we need to ponder them anew every morning to keep their pure ideals and lofty requirements ever before us, lest we allow our standard of holy living to be lowered. A celebrated painter always kept some purely colored stones on his table. When asked by a visitor why he did so, he said it was to keep his eye up to tone. When he was working in pigments, unconsciously his sense of color was weakened. By keeping a pure color near him, he brought his eye up to tone again, just as the musician, by his tuning fork, brings himself up to the right pitch. In the same way, we continually need to turn to God's Word to keep our thoughts and character and life up to the true standard. Rubenstein used to say that he could never omit his daily practice on the piano, for if he did, the quality of his playing would at once begin to deteriorate. He said that if he missed practice for three days, the public would know it. If he missed practice for two days, his friends would know it. And if he did not practice for even one day, he himself knew it. It is no less true in Christian life that in order to keep its holy tone up to what it should be, there must never be a break in the continuity of the study of God's Word. If we leave off for only one day, we shall become conscious of a loss of power in living. If for two successive days we fail to look into God's perfect law, our friends around us will notice the failure in the beauty, the sweetness and the grace of our character and disposition. If for three days we fail to study the Scriptures, to see how God would have us live, even the people of the world will see a lowering of the spiritual quality of our life.